In this video, I'm introducing you to the charming delights of this Singer Vogue. Uh, let's tell you a bit more about the history of these really quite interesting cars. I think it might be the first time I've actually done a Roots car on um, Hubnut, so I'm very pleased to finally be able to tick this box. Before we get started, a huge thank you to Chevronix, uh, where my Citroen GSA has been worked on. This is the personal car, one of many, of the um, owner, Rob Moss. And uh, I love the fact that he's just as proud to own cars like this as he is the wacky and weird world of Citroen. So uh, let's get started. We'll start with the Singer brand. By the time this car was built, Singer was part of the Roots empire. Um, Billy Roots um, and I think his brother um, built up a collection of um, British manufacturers and very much inspired by America. Um, in fact, they even got Raymond Lowy to help out with the styling of the Audax Minx models. Uh, they would often have an annual refresh or change of car. So even though the fundamentals were unchanged, there'd be a, a yearly evolution to try and boost sales to make people want the latest thing. So the Singer Vogue is based on the Hillman Super Minx. Now it seems the Super Minx was probably intended to replace the Audax Minx. Uh, which is getting a bit long in the tooth but actually they decided to keep that model in production and build the super minx above it slightly larger car very similar underpinnings but we have got independent front suspension uh, i think we've got disc brakes but it's still simple leaf springs at the back it's um yeah it's not an engineering tour de force it's a simple car built well and that's what buyers wanted for the most part uh, Singer was sitting within the Roots Empire as kind of a, a more luxurious arm. So a bit like Riley or Walsley. Maybe not quite as plush as a Walsley in the BMC stable. So slightly sporting as well. We have 84 brake horsepower from its 1592cc engine. And that engine has its roots right back to the early days of the series Minx. And went on to have quite a long life. It powered the, the Arrow series of cars that came after this one. Uh, but the Singer Vogue is presented as the um, slightly sporty plusher brother. Uh, another spin-off of the um, Super Minx was the Humber Scepter, which we think was probably meant to be a Sunbeam because it kind of has a Sunbeam-esque grille. And that has, it's the same structure, but um, a lower roof line and very, very sporty, nice looking cars. Um, but we'll start by taking in um, the bodywork because this is a Series 3. Um, on the Singer Vogue and you'll note at the rear we've got six light bodywork originally that the roof was more curved with a wraparound rear window which I think looks better um, this is perhaps a bit more practical it's a higher roof line there's a bit more space in the back but for, for my money um, I'm, I'm all over the um, earlier cars but the thing is the later cars have better engines um, here at the rear you can see we've got some lovely little fins going on but very simple just circular Lucas rear lamps as befitting a luxury model we have reversing lights that was considered a luxury back in the day this was a time when on many cars heaters were optional uh, being, being plush I think the Singer Vogue always had them but yeah it's a, it's a very pleasant car to look at and Roots cars are so underrated um, a lot of people don't give them a second thought they're all over the BMC cars the Farinas and the like Fords and Vauxhalls and somehow the Roots cars have been overlooked. And I think wrongly. But uh, let's take a peek under the bonnet. It's always fun on cars trying to find out how the bonnet opens, but here we go. We are in. And here is the uh, 1592cc engine. And it's comparing favorably with its rivals, often a 1.6 liter engine. But we've got 84 brake horsepower thanks to this Weber twin choke carburetor. Uh, so that's um, a bit potent. But yeah, nice, simple little engine bay, really. Uh, I like the twin tone, or oh, the, the twin pipes sucking air in there. Um, we've got a, a screen wash bag over here, coil mounted there, brake and clutch, I'm guessing, uh, on the cylinders over there. Wiper motor, proper horn, two twin horns because posh. And uh, of course, quad headlamps as well. It was still fairly unusual for the um, early 60s when these cars came out. So the Super Minx and the Vogue came out in 1961. Uh, I think this is in 1965 or 6. Um, so it's fairly near the end um, of production. It must be a 65, I think, because the Series 4 models had the 1725cc engine 
and uh, then the arrow models took off in i think 66 so it's the getting on for a final fling inside there's a lot of vinyl i was hoping it was going to be leather but no we're not quite that plush maybe that was saved for the humber scepter instead nice big um, steering wheel with a good old um, ring um, push on the horn there let's see if the horn actually works oh yes there you go there's those two-tone horns that's sounding magnificent we've got a right hand drive uh, right hand handbrake sorry very common on british cars at the time because we were still moving on from when you'd be able to sit three people across the full width of the car so the handbrake had to go on the right hand side instead dainty little indicator stalk here uh, wiper controls on the dash and uh, yeah it, it's, it's a nice place to sit the pedals are obvious oddly offset to the right to make way for the gearbox uh, which is quite a chunky thing but i shall bring you in for a more detailed look oh the pusher doesn't work oh that's sad uh, the wipers operate like so they don't go anywhere near the top of the windscreen and uh yeah wiper technology has improved since these cars were made i imagine they're not much fun in a downpour hopefully there won't be one today we've not just got a heater it's got a two-speed fan baby so that that was considered the height of luxury in the mid 1960s uh, turn the ignition off so we don't cook the coil got a light switch here choke control here little ashtray heater controls we've got um, oil pressure is apparently um, very very high for a car that isn't running uh, an ammeter i think these are meant to be warning lights but they don't really illuminate all that much anymore and uh, there's a little label there i'm not entirely sure what that says anymore that's um worn away we've got water temperature fuel gauge and it even tells you how big the tank is 47.6 liters and a strip speedometer so the red ribbon moves along to tell you how fast you're going but look how offset the pedals are um, if that's the middle of the steering wheel um, you can see the clutch pedal is actually to the right of it and that is because the gearbox is here um, so this is li little lever going straight down into the four speed gearbox with reverse on a little dog leg over there um, we've got dip switch down there as well all tight and sort of hidden behind the clutch pedal so that operates your main beam when you've got the lights on and uh, over here some very interesting reading matter we open the glove box we've got um, a little can of um, additive because these cars don't like standard fuel and we've got the original handbook which is lovely so it shows you all the things to do is replacing the oil filter uh, yeah, it's, it's seen slightly better days but we've got some photos in here as well of when rob had the car restored because uh, he bought it on ebay because he liked the color combo and they dis discovered it was terrible um, so he's had to do a fair bit of work but you know distributor all these things you were expected to do take your shaft and cam bearing to lubricate uh, so yeah there's all these steps you were meant to do as an owner back then uh, there's more fascinating reading material here just gonna make sure that's closed there we go how about car driving in two weeks this is clearly something aimed at miss hubnut so we'll tell her how to drive a car how to go around a roundabout um how to go around a corner that look that's incorrect and uh, drifting is definitely wrong as well so uh, that could be very useful maybe i should pinch that and let miss hubnut have a read of it um but yeah there's lots of green carpet lots of green vinyl it isn't leather it is vinyl it is already getting quite sticky um, because it's quite a warm day uh, we've got this delightful green fur trim around the door openings it's really nice and although the seats are simple they're, they're actually quite comfortable but yeah the wood's seen slightly better days but i don't mind about that um, these cars were absolutely worthless for a very long time unfortunately so um, they did suffer uh, with the age i think now people are actually starting to take a bit more notice of them which is good so there's plenty of um, squeaky vinyl here in the back but look at that there's decent leg room with a seat set for me that's actually a bit better than i expected and with this extra window um it feels very um bright and breezy here and the higher flatter roof line means i've actually got a decent amount of headroom i could wear a hat so uh that's, that's quite appealing we've got little ashtrays in the doors here winding windows that go all the way down so that's a bit of a boon uh, because the door is so square the window can drop all the way down so as is rather typical of cars of this era you have hundreds of keys 
uh, keys have even got roots on. Um, but a uh, nice touch is this little flap to uh, stop your keyhole filling up with um, water during rain. But there we go, the boot lid comes quite a long way down. So you've got a decent opening and you can get a fair bit in there, I suspect. Got these supports here that rob a bit of space. And of course the hinges will drop down into your boot space as well. That's sadly one of those factors of the time. But yeah, not a bad boot. And just look at those fins. Well, here we go. Uh, we'll start the engine. We're right opposite Chevronic's um, showroom at the moment. A very typical sort of a classic uh, British um, starter motor sound. The seatbelt connects like so. So the clip's actually sitting on your hip, uh, really. And then you lift the flap to um, get out. And it's a static seatbelt, so you've got to kind of adjust it to suit you. So I'm going to go a little bit tighter because I don't really want to strike the steering wheel in the case of a collision. A mobile phone starting to fall in my pocket. That can go down there. Uh, so yeah, you've got this weird offset um, position and an indicator stalk that turns off but turns the opposite one on. So uh, it's um, quirky for sure. No exterior mirrors, not a requirement at this time. So I very much need to do the over the shoulder check and we're away. Boy, you can really hear the lusty pull of that twin choke carburetor. And it feels quite sprightly, but uh, it must be said it is very much geared for uh, town, I should say. And we're going to go left down here and away we go. The steering is very low geared, so it does require quite a lot of arm twirling. But yeah, very charming. I think by this stage they've got an all synchro box as well. There we go, 30 miles an hour. We're ambling along quite nicely. Just a faint hum of rear axle wind there. Uh, 74,000 miles on the clock. That might be getting a little tired by now. But yeah, I mean, this is just lovely. And that's what's sad about the fact these cars are um, so overlooked is that they are actually nice to drive. In some ways, I think they're nicer than the equivalent BMC Farina cars. Uh, I know I might attract a, an awful lot of hatred for that. Because I know those cars have a massive following. But they are big, heavy. Uh, they're not the best in terms of handling. Very tractable engine, look at that. Third gear. So, very relaxing to drive as well. Um, I don't know if I've got any fresh air coming in. There might be something aimed at my feet. They seem to be quite cool. Got little quarter light windows as well, of course. Uh, those don't want to open. I'm not going to force them. Uh, I might open my window a little more just because it is rather warm today and the vinyl is getting sticky. I'm reminded of the horrors of uh, vinyl seats. It's a lovely little gear lever, really precise and snickety. Oh, we're getting up to the dizzy heights of 40 miles an hour now. But yeah, it's feeling very stable. I'm not having to fight to keep it in a straight line, even though it's recirculating ball steering, which can be a little vague and wandery. But uh, oh yes, I'm definitely getting the um, air control. The flow of air to my feet is most welcome. It's a shame these cars are so underrated, really, but that goes for a lot of the root stuff. I'm not sure why the roots cars haven't developed more of a following. Uh, the Sunbeam Alpine, the pretty little sports car. Uh, it's actually the second Sunbeam Alpine. Uh, they're, they're a lovely car to drive. Uh, ultimately not as sporty perhaps as an MGB, but uh, very, very pleasant cars to drive. It's hardly setting the world alight in terms of engineering. It is competent, it is pleasant, it is easy to drive. Keeping an eye on everybody because my brakes are not as good as modern cars, although I'm gonna give them a shove. Yeah, that's um, decent enough retardation. Can feel the front end drop. So maybe we'll say that's not so bad after all. The steering can be quite heavy at parking speeds and you have to turn the wheel a lot. But uh, now we're moving, it, it actually feels really lovely. 
Now, if you were going to buy one of these cars, uh, I'm afraid they did rot. Everything rotted back in the day. But the problem was, well, even by the 1980s, interest was starting to grow in cars like the BMC Farinas and some of the older Fords. These cars were overlooked for a long time, which means there's a lot of really bad examples out there. Some of them dressed up to look far better than they in fact are. So you do have to be a little bit wary. All right, let's take it around this roundabout and uh, test the mighty handling power. Yeah, it rolls a bit, um, but uh, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's not going to make it round the bend, so uh, I'd say that's a good thing. Amusingly, this car is currently being used as a daily driver by uh, Rob's son James, because his 2CV is broken. Maybe you slammed it too much, James. Maybe that was the problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is fine for potting around locally. I, w I wouldn't want to drive to the moon and back in it, but uh, th this is lovely on these roads and proof yet again but when it comes to power maybe less is more Whoa. oh yes that's uh rolling a bit whoa losing its composure a little And now I'm making it accelerate uphill. I'm sorry, little car, but we can have this camper van. But yeah, by the time we're up to um, 60 miles an hour, that's, um, that's not feeling like something you would want to do for too long. Now the subsequent Arrow series of cars, the Hillman Hunter, the Humber Scepter, and uh, they also did a Singer Vogue and the Gazelle version of the Arrow. Uh, they had, uh, oh, I'm going to put my lights on, we're going into a tunnel. They ha had the option of overdrive. My dad had a Hunter with an overdrive and it was a very outdated car by the 1980s when I was growing up, but I loved it. I thought the overdrive was the coolest thing I had ever seen. I admit it was a slightly sheltered childhood, but there we are. But I was a bit better at speed than this. This is definitely... Um, you wouldn't want to go any faster but then you've got the ambience of the wood uh, this lovely fur the green carpet you know you just sit back and you soak that up you're not in such a rush anyway are you really right, trying to give you something of a driver's eye view check the blind spot you see the ribbon speedometer working its way along very compact but very clear it's very easy to see how fast I'm going I quite like these ribbon speedometers some people really don't like them but I don't see what possible issue you could have frankly work that wheel baby well I've chosen a Bit of a strange spot to finish this video but that is the uk's first roundabout apparently built circa 1909 and there's lovely old lamp posts here as well uh, i wonder which is older it, it's quite interesting to say but yeah that, that is a thoroughly lovely car and uh, i've just done quite a bit of driving through lechworth it's an absolute joy to drive around town the controls are so light and simple there's the transmission line, there's no shunting, it just works really, really well. That is such a pleasant car. Out on the open road, it all gets a bit much for it, poor love. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have a car that's good at driving slowly. Because let's face it, the way traffic levels are going in this country, uh, all of us seem to spend most of our time driving slowly. So there you go, that was the Singer Vogue. A very lovely car it was too. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.
Sunbeam um, Alpine, the original sport, well, not the original sports car, but because, uh, yeah, I've confused matters. Never mind. Sometimes I've no idea what I'm going on about myself. Should we have this one in the blooper reel?